Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening. Welcome uh, for that new Golem live session. Uh, my name is Nico, and I'm going to be your host for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, and uh, we're going to handle a quick uh, a question and answer session right after. Today's session is going to be about uh, the layout tool of Golem, but before we get started with that, uh, let me remind you that uh, we're going to run those sessions uh, every week on Thursdays and uh, Fridays, and next week it's going to be about... Uh, on Thursday, it's going to be about how do you handle um, geometry variation for your characters and shading. And on Friday, we're going to speak about locomotion and go to. While I'm uh, doing this session, Alex uh, from Golem is uh, also uh, moderating the chat box. So feel free um, to ask questions during the sessions and uh, yeah, redirect uh, those to me. And I probably will be able to answer those uh, at the end. So today we're going to speak about the layout tool. I'm really excited about that session because that's the brand uh, new version of that tool we've been uh, adding into Golem 7. Um, just before we jump right into Maya, I just want to show you where we're in the workflow. So our, you got a um, whole, the whole idea of what we're going to do today. Um, so here we're going to assume that simulations have been made. So uh, step five have been made. We've been exporting simulation and before rendering, uh, it always happens that you need to fix stuff from uh, simulation. Uh, so this is where sim uh, simulation layout comes in. Uh, it's a tool which allows you to edit the simulation results. So you can uh, maybe see it as a retake tool, but you can also see it as a layout tool because you can uh, maybe make a simulation with just three, four characters and build your scene with hundreds of characters from do those three, four that you just edited and placed them like art artistically and interactively. So that's a really takeaway of the, the layout tool here uh, is that um, you'll be able to interactively edit the result. So you can have your artistic director next to you or the director of your project next to you and you can um, just uh, interactively uh, change what's required and uh, iterate way, way, way more faster than just going back to simulation. So uh, let me show you this uh, in situation. So as I said, here we're going to consider that a simulation has been made. And uh, actually here I made a really silly simulation. It's uh, probably 100 characters here. Uh, they all like moving towards uh, a position which is uh, supposed to be in the corner uh, there. They avoiding themselves, uh, other characters, and uh, they're just walking uh, to that position. So let's say the brief is I want characters to gather um, uh, to a point. So you, you ended up with that simulation and you do a play blast of that, but you got reviews and you need to edit uh, those results. So you've got two ways to tackle that. So if, um, I don't know, if maybe the, 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 the director is asking, I want those characters to run. Um, that's not something you can handle with the layout. You will have to go back into a simulation here, change your behaviors, and uh, re-export the simulation. But let's say the retakes are, uh, you know what, I want to remove those characters here. Um, I want to have some more compact crowd. I want to have crowd coming from that location here. I want some characters to wear sweatshirts. That's stuff you will be able to handle at layout. So that's a question I'm often having here is, um, what can I do in layout? Uh, what do I do in layout? And what do I do in simulation? It's, well, we don't really have the answer to that question. It really depends on preferences here. There's, there are some stuff you can't do in layout and there are some stuff you can't do in simulation. So that's easy to answer, but there's plenty of stuff you can actually do in both, um, both uh, workflow, both in simulation and both in layout. So really up to you and up to your preference here. Um, I guess it's mostly relies on, on experience there. So let me speak about that uh, layout tool. So first, um, um, the way uh, you see this is uh, by opening it from here. So that's that button within the shelf. So you can see a character walking with some layers next to it. And once again, it's a, a nodal uh, tool that uh, you'll be able to take into uh, um, your workflow. So the way you read it is there are like two different kinds of nodes. There's one which is called selector node and um, other nodes which are going to be um, transformation nodes. So transformation nodes are gray and um, selector nodes, oh, sorry, they're like, sorry, gray, blue, bluish kind of. 
and uh, select a node there entirely gray. You can see here I'm 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 changing the color and uh, some node. The node is becoming uh, light blue here. Uh, I'm going to speak about that later. Just ignore that. Um, just if you create a node. Uh, which is a transformation node, it's going to be blue. If you create a selector node, it's going to be gray, and you got that uh, uh, additional information here, which is the active node, but I'm going to speak about that a bit later. Um, so selector just specify which part of your crowd you want to select, and transformation is just uh, on those selectors, I'm going to apply a pile of transformation. Uh, and that's it, that's the whole workflow. So. The whole idea is you just put selectors um, and you just uh, assign transformations next to each other and um, by doing those you're just um, uh, making your shot and fixing your shots. And you can see we provide a couple of, um, of layers and uh, we're going to go through those layers, mm, I'm going to say mm, probably most of them, maybe not all of them but most of them so you get a, a good idea of what's going on here. So selectors, uh, transformations and let's speak about that blue node, so you're going to make like a a full graph of transformations and sometimes you may want to evaluate only a sub part of that graph. So that um, a light blue node here tells you which part of the graph you're uh, currently evaluating and you can change it just by selecting a node and pressing the V key while selecting the node or uh, doing a right click on the node and setting it as root. So by setting it as root you're just saying that this is the part of the graph you're gonna uh, evaluate. So let's uh, kick that in and uh, let's get started. So sure I can drag and drop nodes, uh, write some IDs into them to specify which characters I would like to select but obviously um, what I would like to do is select my characters directly from the viewport. So I can go F9 within Maya which means I'm gonna be in vertex selection mode and uh, when I'm in the vertex selection mode now I can just um, drag uh, within the viewport and you can see that any characters that I do select here will end up into my selection and um, you have to consider those as any Maya object so that means you can uh, bring the translate node for example the translate tool uh, for example here and translate your characters and as soon as you do that, you can see that the layout tool understood what you were uh, actually doing. So let's um, check uh, what was created here. So it has created like a, a selector node and within that selector node into the entities attribute, uh, it puts all the IDs of the entities I've selected. Great. And uh, it also created like a translate node and uh, it's just saying that the translation is uh, on the Z axis by uh, six point. Um, 83 units. Let's say I want to uh, change this manually. I can just say, okay, I want to move my characters by 10 units, and you can see that now the characters uh, have been shifted a bit. Great. Just to make my point about uh, the active node, if I decide to put the selector node as an active node, the trans translation is not going to be applied anymore, so we don't see the translation here. So let's bring back the translation. Great. Um, sure, you can uh, press the E key uh, on your keyboard and bring the rotate uh, tool. Uh, within the rotate tool you can decide if you're gonna be into the word axis so word axis means that I'm gonna like rotate the whole group of character um, or you can say I'm gonna be into object mode and object mode means that I'll be able to rotate my character on their home uh, axis pivot here so uh, here it creating it's creating a rotate node which uh, says that uh, it's not using any pivots so means that uh, each character will be rotated around their home pivot and uh, I'm rotating my characters by 40 degrees on the Y axis. Uh, what about scale? So sure I can uh, bring within the viewport the scale um, the scale mode within Maya as well and uh, once again if I'm in object mode it means that I'm gonna scale my characters if I'm in word mode here it means that I'm gonna expand the, the distances between my characters. So notice here it has created two nodes, one which is the scale. So the scale means that I scale my character so they're bigger, they're uh, 1.26 uh, ratio, so it's a factor uh, which is uh, being applied to the character. Uh, and here I also uh, expanded the distance, so here it's the expand node. If you want to build that graph manually, obviously all those same nodes, they're uh, within the layout node library on the left so you can just bring like a translate node and connect it yourself or rotate node or um, the face node or scale or expand really up to you here 
if at some point you want to disable a node, you can just right click and disable it. You can see now it's uh, it's uh, getting transparent, kind of. And you can see that the characters are not getting applied, that node, that scaling node anymore, they're back to their original uh, scale. Um, let's say you want to apply that same uh, group of deformation to more characters. Maybe you would like to include uh, those guys. Um, so you get plenty of different ways to actually achieve that. You can go into the selector node, maybe uh, bring your selection and uh, and put uh, press the add button here. But maybe for some reason you need to have a, maybe a, a group of selections uh, because you want to apply more deformations, especially to those guys. W you, what you can just do is uh, just create a new selector node here and uh, and connect that uh, new selector node to that same graph of deformation. And you can see that now those guys. They were um, they were here before. Now they're getting applied the exact same deformation. So um, usually, so th the way you see that is you just add nodes and nodes, and uh, you just converge with the final result. So at the end, you probably end up with a lot of nodes, and you don't re you're not really sure of um, what is doing what. So um, first thing is uh, at any time, if you click on a node, it shows you. Uh, which entities are getting impacted by uh, that node. So here the rotate is going to be applied on those characters here. Translate is going to be applied on the same characters. The selector uh, is only those guys there. Do selector, that selector here is only those guys there. And the opposite is true as well. Uh, it means that if you select one character or multiple characters, you can see uh, uh, what deformation gets applied to them. So if you select from the viewport, you'll see within the layout editor which parts gets activated on them. If you select uh, within the layout, you'll see the characters which uh, get assigned with that. So let's uh, maybe play with uh, more nodes. Um, let's say I'm, I'm really happy with that, but uh, as my director told me, I want to have, he, he wants to have characters here uh, on the side. And uh, maybe you want to have like twice, uh, twice more character uh, within that, that setup here. So maybe what, can I, what I can start doing is um, is uh, right after here. I can create the selector node. I'm going to connect it here. So now I'm going to change my current selection. So all those operations get applied to those two selector. Now I'm saying, okay, there's there's a new selection here, and what's going to be after is going to be applied only on that selection. So uh, that selector here, uh, let's put a star. Star will stand for uh, everybody. It's kind of a white card to say I want to select everybody. And I can use the duplicate node. So um, either I can drag and drop it. Um, I often drag and drop and link. Or if I double click on the directly on the icon here, it's gonna create the node and connect it to the last active node. Uh, so up to you to decide uh, what you're more comfortable with. So here I'm having uh, I'm having duplicated my characters, and it means that now I'm having twice more characters within the scene, but there are at the exact same position, so you can't really see them. So on my duplicate characters, what I want to do is apply a transform. And now you'll see that you're having twice more characters and still running still running super fast within the viewport. So something about that duplicate node. Remember at the beginning, at the beginning of uh, uh, that session, I was telling that you got the gray node, which are Okay, so sorry about that. Apparently the, the mic drop, the sound drop uh, down again. So I'm not sure where, uh, when that cut out. Uh, so um, maybe let me restart from where I was. Um, I was speaking about the duplicate node. And uh, so I was saying that the duplicate node is um, both uh, bluish and uh, grayish. Um, and uh, that means you remember at the beginning, I was saying that you got gray node, which are selectors. And you got blue nodes, which are uh, transformations. And that node is actually both. It's actually both a selector and a transformation. Um, because uh, what comes out that node is uh, the duplicate of the characters. So when you do the translation operation, it's actually apply 
uh, on um, on uh, those characters, only the duplicated ones. Okay, um, what if I want to uh, rotate those guys because I want them to come from another direction? I can just, uh, oops, that's not the rotate on pivot I want. That's the word rotate here. So let's uh, bring them into, oops, different position here. So they're gonna come from here, retranslate them a bit, and now they're gonna converge to that same point and I'm having twice more characters converging to the position. So about that layout tool, if we pay attention, maybe there will be some collision because here we're not in simulation anymore. Uh, so we don't have avoidance anymore. Uh, we don't have all those physics fancy stuff. Uh, so we here it's really up to you to, to figure if there are some collision and if they're uh, if they're like uh, are a problem for the shot if you can't see them and if anybody nobody saw them um, well feel free to just uh, keep them if if it's obvious on camera you can just kill characters so what about killing characters um, let's say here um, maybe those guys and well let's make an obvious selection so uh, that would be better maybe those characters here I'm already happy with those. Um, Maybe I can just create a new selection here and say, okay, that new selection, I want to remove those guys. So I can just bring the kill node here and connect that to my selection and I don't have those characters anymore. So they still exist uh, within the cache, but that's just, um, they're just erased from the rendering. And um, let's say you're happy with that. So I'm going to bring more nodes, but I just want to, uh, oh, I just want to wrap that for, for that scene here. Um, let's say you're happy with that and you want to render that uh, the first thing you need to do is to save this so here just a word about uh, the layout here when you save it it's going to be saved as um, GSCL which stands from uh, Golem Simulation Cache Layout and uh, it means that that file is going to be applied on top of the cache which means that you've got your cache of walking characters if I go back into simulation here I still have my simulation of walking characters and, and moving forward. Oh, let me bring the sim, it's here. Um, so the sim still exists and it looks like this, but when you're in layout, you got um, all of this here. So it's applied on top of the simulation cache. So it's not changing anything within the simulation cache, it's just applying modification on top, which means that as soon as you're saved, if I create maybe a light with an R node, uh, now you can actually uh, save your scene here and render and that means that at render time we'll take the simulation cache we'll take the layout we're gonna apply that layout onto the simulation cache and um, you're gonna see the modification being applied so here you can see you got twice more characters killed characters in the middle uh, and characters converging into the right position so uh, maybe to finish with this uh, let me bring uh, more uh, nodes here you can see uh, all the characters they're wearing the same t-shirt uh, so let's say I want to change the assets on uh, some of those guys maybe uh, that guy here so uh, let me bring uh, select a node I can double click and that connects that automatically for me and um, among so there the, the layers are kind of sorted uh, by types of what they're doing so you get all the uh, geometrical transformation like rotate expand scales uh, you get all the time um, time controllers. Maybe I, I can uh, say a quick word about those. You got all the posture controllers here uh, until that plane with the locators, and at the end you get all the geometry controllers too. So to change, to be able to change geometry assignment or shading assignment. Uh, so here, what I'm gonna use is the add remove mesh assets. So I'm gonna uh, bring it here. And uh, onto that character, which is there, which is wearing a t-shirt, let's bring uh, maybe a sweatshirt instead. So the add remove mesh asset here, um, I can uh, press the plus button here to uh, get a list of all the assets I, I can add on that character, which comes from the character file. So please uh, uh, check the video about how you make your characters to know about the character file. And what I'm gonna do here is say the mesh I want to add is the sweatshirt. Um, so now you can see the sweatshirt appeared on that character, but uh, I still have the t-shirt which collide because they are at the same depth. So uh, I actually also want to add a mesh to remove. So the mesh I would like to remove is the t-shirt and I can add as many, uh, as many meshes into that list. Let's say I don't want to have the hair anymore and I want to have a bold character, I can just bring that in. And uh, maybe I want to duplicate that style onto more characters here. Maybe I want those guys to have a sweatshirt as well. I just 
just bring a selector node here, connect that to my mesh. And uh, now my characters get a sign. Uh -huh. Yeah, now, okay, I can see that character in the background here. Uh, now my characters get a sign with that sweatshirt uh, as well. Um, and that that's the whole idea is that you can just plug and play uh, your selectors and your transformation and uh, and just iterate through the shot. So it's more like retaking our workflow right now. Let me show you maybe another workflow, which is like uh, making an actual shot here. So let me switch uh, uh, Maya here. So let's say I'm uh, having those, those characters here, which are just walking on the flat ground. Uh, and um, oh, by the way, you know what? Speaking about ground, let me just rewind into this. Sorry about that. Uh, I totally forgot that I wanted to show you one of the best feature we have and the really shame on me on that. Um, so let me unselect those guys there. Um, what about, sorry, what about the terrain? Uh, here, uh, that was convenient. My simulation has been made on a flat terrain and here I, I'm still running my characters on flat terrain, so which is good. Uh, but what about the terrain changed? So sure, you could go back into uh, into simulation and rerun the same, but uh, as I have duplicated some characters, those characters are not in the, they are duplicated from characters from another place. So the eight they will be at will not be correct. So uh, we need a way to be able to take into account a new terrain uh, within the layout. So that new terrain, the way it works is you got that node here, which is called the proxy manager, which is kind of a wrapper which uh, from which all the all the layout uh, nodes share the same properties. So uh, it's the node which knows about the terrain. It's the nodes which tells uh, all the nodes how they should be displayed. And um, that node here has something called destination terrain. So you can tell that you're having a terrain which is different from what you had into simulation. So this is my destination terrain. What I can do is just select it, select my proxy manager and say that I want to use that geometry. So here's just one mesh, but you can select multiple meshes if you want to. And you want to export this as a new destination terrain. So we need to bake that terrain into a... Um, a golem file format because we're going to need that at render time as well to regenerate the position of the characters at the right eight and you can see that as soon as i've got that destination terrain now my characters they are adapted on that new terrain they're climbing up that new terrain as well nothing fancy here uh, if we take a closer look here we may see that the footprints are not completely adapted to the ground because what we did is uh, uh, just taking the, the eight of the character when we did the simulation. And now we're looking at what's the eight of the terrain at the same position. And we just apply an offset on the Y axis. So that's it, it's just an offset here. But let's say you want to have something more fancy because the characters are gonna be really close to camera and uh, you want um, the footprints to be adapted. Uh, for that matter, we've got that ground adaptation terrain. So most of the time we, we try to bring it in at the end of the workflow. So I'm just gonna create like a selector node. Once again, I'm gonna put a star to select everybody. So that means that I want all my characters to have a, a specific ground adaptation here. And um, I can bring a ground adaptation node and pay attention here. Right now I'm using snap eight, uh, which means that um, I'm just applying an offset. So the one I just explained, but you got more choices and one is with I key. And as soon as I'm gonna select that, look at the footprint of the character. Here we go. So. Now you've seen that the characters, they changed a bit. So the footprints are, are being adapted. And um, also the characters uh, has been, uh, the characters has been banked a bit. So you can change those if you want to. But now you get really nice footprint being adapted on the slope of, uh, of your terrain. And, and you got a, uh, something which will be as good as if you had it made with the simulation. So, okay, that, that was it for uh, retakes. Uh, let's go into making a shot. So um, let's say you're doing an animation show, maybe TV, uh, TV series, or maybe long feature animation. Uh, and uh, some most of the time you don't really want to mess around uh, with the simulation and the behaviors. So um, what people tend to do more and more is uh, every time they got a new animation, they just uh, you know apply that on one character and make a cache out of this. And when I they are happy with that, they create a preset for that. So this is the simulation cache library. And every time you're having a simulation, which you like, so it could be just that simulation here or the simulation I just had before, 
um, you can make a, maybe a, like a new tab here and just add it as a new preset. So I'm just I'm just saying I want to save that cache as a new preset. And if you're not happy with the screenshot, you can just redo it to um, for something more obvious. Um, so it's telling you how many entities you have. So just six entities, uh, almost 300 frames. Um, that the ca it tells you the cache name and that kind of data. You can add some tags if you want to. Maybe I can say, okay, I want to tag uh, this with uh, maybe walking and those are cartoon characters. So whatever, uh, those tags are gonna be used uh, when uh, you're gonna filter, as to filter uh, what's gonna happening here. So you may end up with, you know, hundreds of presets. We call that vignettes. And sometimes you just want to have working characters and you got those 100 vignettes. So if you tag them properly, you can just uh, start with walk here and you'll have your characters uh, vignettes walking appearing there. And uh, let's say we want to bring that into a different setup. Um, let's say I'm having uh, that street environment and I would like to bring my characters within that uh, street environment. So um, I'm uh, opening that uh, new scene. So it has a, a bit of geometry, so that may take uh, a few seconds to open. Uh, and when I'm gonna have that scene, uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, scatter those characters around and, and just move them around and uh, layout them. So this is where uh, that layout tool names come from. It's because really you can lay out your character from scratch, take a, a cache as small as six characters and just uh, move them around and uh, layout them the way you want to. Okay, come on Maya, let's wake up and uh, open that scene. Um, and that will be a good chance to show you also new nodes to control uh, blind data and maybe reanimate some of the characters. So, um, okay, let's, um, let's um, this is like a street environment here and I would like to have maybe a, a, a manifestation in the middle. I want to have uh, people protesting in the middle. Uh, so let's bring my cache in. I just select my cache here and that's just creating and selecting my characters there uh, Which is great um, All good and uh, what I would like to have is uh, maybe hundreds of characters walking here So uh, in the front row here I'm having those three characters walking with different size and one has a, a prop it has a like a you know a, a protest sign into the end uh, So I would like to scatter those characters around so um, here I just isolated my geometry. So I'm gonna use that uh, to say it's gonna be uh, a terrain and I'm gonna create like a population tool like you would do for a simulation, but you don't have to care about entity types and you're gonna start maybe placing those. So I'm gonna make uh, like a row of characters, uh, maybe add more, uh, change the orientation of those guys, maybe increase the distance, maybe four is a bit too big. So yeah. Increase the distance here, noise that a bit, maybe replace that tool so it will be properly in the middle. And uh, what I would like to do is uh, take those guys, so select those guys here, go into the layout tool and select them first and scatter them. So I would like to scatter them on the pop tool so you can use the snap to node, connect that together. And uh, within the snap to node, you can select uh, a population tool in which you want to apply your characters. And uh, here you go. So what's happening here is like it's duplicating those characters and it just assigns them on the slot. So let's say you go into your population tool and you edit it. Maybe you had uh, more rows, let's say 30 rows instead of, of 20. Now you get uh, more characters here being assigned. That snap to node, it has something called a reference frame. Um, so reference frame means where, uh, from which frame of the cache, so of my character's vignette, do we start uh, snapping the characters to? Because my characters, they're gonna offset during the whole duration of the cache. So what frame do I use as a reference to snap my characters on? And uh, as soon as you do that, now you have your characters uh, yeah, being snapped on it. Uh, so my characters, I know that they have a, a blend shape to control their eyes and obviously they're protesters and they look way too much happy to me here. Um, so let's say I, I want to um, just uh, on some of them randomly, I want to apply different value for that blend shape. So let's bring a selector node here and uh, amongst the different options of the selector node you got, so I can put a star to select once again everybody, but here I want to kept only maybe let's say 50% of them. And now I'm just having 50% of those characters being selected. 
Um, so that's just a way to subselect something from your characters. Also, uh, just to uh, lighten this up, if you look into the documentation for the selector, you can write expressions here. Uh, so you can uh, check characters which belong to a specific character file, to a specific entity type, to a specific crowd field, uh, up to you. So have a look to the selector node documentation it details uh, in much more details what you can do. So let's say I want to um, change the, the, um, the blend shape value. I can bring a blind data node. Uh, blend shapes within Golem are, are stored as what we call blind data. And uh, if we take a look, that blind data looks pretty blank. I'm not really sure where I should add my stuff. It's because um, you need to specify what you want to do with that. So you, have, you need to right click on it to say you want to create the parameters for all the blind data. So here it's reading for the characters which have been selected what are uh, the blend shapes which are available. So when I've defined my characters, I define some blend shapes. So it has one which is called Eyes, Eyes Angry. So that's exactly the one I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, so that's left here, Hi Angry. So great. And I can just put a value of one. And now you can see that within the viewport, some characters, but only half of them have now angry eyes. You could no noise that if you want to. You can even like keyframe that value. You could animate that value if you wanted to. So here, if you just say use keyframe, uh, you can just say, okay, at frame zero, they're gonna be, they're gonna have a value of one. Well, let's do that. And at frame fifty, maybe. Uh, so let's add a keyframe. Let's say at frame fifty here. So from frame zero to frame uh, fifty, they're gonna be angry. And maybe at frame sixty, um, they're gonna start not being angry anymore. So let's put 60 here within the frame and value is gonna be zero. So here you can see, especially that guy here is throating, looks really angry because we are from before frame 50 and from 50 to 60 is just going back to what he had before. Um, also, it's quite obvious that my characters there within the same posture. So what if I want to uh, uh, maybe uh, time offset them? So let's play with time nodes. Uh, let's bring a new selector and I would like uh, to select all of them here and, uh, and maybe just uh, offset them. So we got a time offset frame offset node in which you can specify what's the frame offset you want to apply. So I can offset them by 10 frame, but they're all going to be offset by the same amount of frame. So not really efficient here because they are still look the same. But instead, what I can use is the frame offset noise. So I can noise that frame offset I'm getting applied. So I can apply um, uh, 10 frames uh, offset noise. And now you can see that. So that's before, that's after. Now you can see that my characters, they all have random posture uh, between zero and 10 frames. Um, okay, not so bad. What else can I show you? Um, it's almost time to wrap up. Uh, let me show you uh, maybe one of the final layers. So we got a layer to look at somewhere. Granotation, we spoke about that one. We, we got a layer to follow trajectories. Uh, some layers to change shading. Uh, I haven't spoke about those and uh, probably it's a good time to speak about those. So those are called uh, the rig and posture uh, layer. So uh, let me maybe select that guy here, promote him and uh, you know, he's gonna be in front of all of this. And maybe, you know, if the director comes and say, oh, you know what, I really like that character in the way it's layout, but uh, probably I would, I would like an animator to produce some uh, uh, more animation, more detailed animation on that guy. So can you maybe promote him and export him to, well, that will be the casual workflow, like exporting to FBX, and we'll have some tools, we'll remap it on uh, the animation rig, and so on and so forth. So that will, you know, that means that that character will go out of the crowd workflow. You will have to remove him out of the crowd workflow and, and an animator will take over. Uh, so let's say you don't want to go out of that workflow because if you go out, it won't be like as efficient in terms of rendering as it was uh, a golem character. And um, well, and maybe, you know, sometimes you don't have the tools to actually remap that FBX on the animation rig and it's a pain. So. Uh, you got two ways to actually handle that. So we got a way which is called uh, the posture node and posture node means that we're gonna create for you the Maya joints and you will be able to animate those Maya joints if you want to, but uh, it means that you're gonna use forward kinematics. What if you want to use inverse kinematics? So you can create uh, like a rig node and connect that to your selection and your character. So once again, uh, pretty dry the interface. There's nothing going on here, no attribute to change. Uh, because 
uh, it all reminds into the rig node which is here and what you want to do uh, is right click on it and uh, press create rig node so what's going on right now is here in the background golem is creating for you uh, an entire uh, rig node there oh let's wait a minute uh -huh. and uh, it's supposed to not sure what's uh, happening here but it's supposed to actually follow the character controls okay let me just figure that in uh, let me like remove that node and uh, you know what I'm gonna just go back into the the beginning of my pal here and maybe show that uh, onto that character because I, I don't want to spend too much time like uh, figuring what's going on so what I just want to do is uh, show you how that node is supposed to work and uh, I'll figure that uh, a bit later probably so let me go into uh, maybe a new selector node here I want to select that guy here so let's go back with vertex mode only that guy and set it and let's hope it's gonna work now uh, apply a rig node on it so I want that node to be uh, active here create rig node and see how it goes so okay that's better so yeah um, I never worried about this so uh, as I was saying earlier here it's not your animation rig so let's be clear about this uh, this is not the exact same animation rig your animators are used to use but it's a pretty decent like IQ rig that you can still take advantage of so here um, what I'm doing is just selecting um, the uh, the IQ controller for for the arm which is uh, that node here and I can just take it here and uh, just reanimate this so those are like locators my locators you can select and uh, you can uh, you know change uh, the orientation of the final lamp here like this well my fingers are kind of messed up uh, you can change the pole vector if you're not really happy with the pole vector which has been provided here and uh, any limb that you've been defined within golem it's going to be transformed as an IQ limb that you'll be able to play with and this is fully like keyframable so you can uh, set your keyframes everywhere and those are going to be stored within the rig node you even have a, a control for uh, the hip bone and you can just move your hip bone and you got uh, all the IQ uh, being produced on the other part of the body so uh, you can tell I'm not an animator so I'm not going to do a good job uh, at making that posture but that's you know the whole idea is that you can reanimate ed everything you want to here put your keyframes use animation layers and when you press save all those are going to be saved as uh, a new layer of the right onto uh, your characters so yeah that's kind of it for me it's uh, 37 past uh, 6 uh, so yeah I wanted to wrap this into 30 minutes uh, so we can have more times to uh, take questions so uh, now is a is a good time to uh, write your questions I can see some are actually uh, actually uh, within uh, my chat box so let me maybe check those uh, how do I invert the select uh, the current selected entities in the selector nodes haha <laughs> that's an excellent question and um, to be honest that's not uh, ready yet um, because not so easy to do but it's definitely on the list uh, so for now you can't invert selection you have to unfortunately unfortunately make the selection yourself um, maybe another way you have uh, if you're you know like a let's say like a coder um, we have an API around that layout tool and you can ask for what's selected right now you can ask so it, re it, it returns you a list of IDs and you can also ask for all IDs of the scene and you can make the inversion yourself so you can make it like a knot that would produce a list of um, a new list of IDs so you take the selection you take the full uh, crowd and you just remove the selection from the full crowd you end up with the list and you can use that to fill um, that selector node unfortunately that's not part of the default package you will have to uh, wrap around a tool uh, with that um, can I show the vector field so um, yeah if I got uh, maybe more time uh, at the end of the the q and I can maybe create uh, a quick scene uh, let me address that question a bit later else um, if you take a look on the um, on the tutorials we got a we got one which is able to show you the vector fields um, why you can't create specific blend shapes in blind data node instead of create an attribute for each blend shape um, you can't um, 
Uh, you mean just having uh, like specifying which entries you would like to have per node? Okay, I get that. Um, it's a good question, mostly because we made that node that way and we didn't think about another way at the time we did it. Uh, but probably like you could like right select, uh, maybe we can make an option for that, so, like right select the node and say you want to create blind shapes for that. Um, but that's a good suggestion, so I'll totally keep that into uh, my to-do list. Uh, I need to kill some entities in some frames only, uh, like I need to kill an entity from from 100 to 200. Uh, let me check that. Uh, probably it's not implemented neither. Let me check. Uh, it's active. No, the kill node is not keyframable. Uh, so typically that will mean that that kind of um, um, that kind of um, feature here will be something you will have to tackle um, at uh, simulation time only. Um, maybe I can also check if uh, this is uh, like a, a good use case we can think about for the layout. But um, yeah, that's definitely you, something you will have to do with uh, the simulation. So amongst the different behaviors, we got one which is called the kill behavior. Uh, and that one can be triggered at any time on, on which characters you'd like. Uh, so up to you here, uh, you can say, okay, I want to only select some characters here and kill them, That but that's happening in two um that's happening into um sorry simulation not layout um so there are some questions who apparently have been asked uh, uh, are layout files additive uh, if i have multiple layout files will the transform be added or overridden that's an excellent question that's something i didn't really address that's something we actually worked on and uh, we're really proud of that uh so this is like the cache proxy node uh this is on uh, the node on which um uh, which is able to display the characters and show you the result of that. So let me maybe go back into my full layout uh, graph, uh, which is that one here. Okay, and uh, let's say you're really happy with that. Wh what you could do is uh, actually add a new layout file. So here you got all your simulation attribute parameters, uh, simulation cache attribute parameters. So everything which has been exported and you got all your layout operations here on onto your characters. Um, and let's say it's going to be your master scene. Uh, so you could save that as a master scene. And then you got shots. And those shots are all starting from the master scene. But you don't want to um, like um, change anything from the master scene layout. So you can start by locking that layout file. So here I just press the lock icon. And I can't do anything anymore into this. So I can save the scene like that. And maybe give that to other artists. Uh, and they can all share the same scene and you'll be sure that even if they share the same scene, they won't be able to uh, change anything within the master layout. But let's say per shot, you would like to do some modification. So what you can do is you can add a new layout file and within that new layout file, you can make per shot some adjustments. So let's say you're not happy. For some reason, the camera here um, maybe shows that character and you don't want to have that character here anymore. So you can just uh, select that character here and see, I'm not within the same tab here. I'm with another tab and I can select that character and I kill. I can kill him. And um, now that character disappeared, but he disappeared only from that layer, that new layer where I haven't saved it yet. So let me maybe save uh, it as a, a shot version of it. So it's gonna be here. So layout shots. And this is going to be saved into that new shot uh, layer and uh, you'll be able to take advantage of that if you want to. So I hope that answered the question. Um, what can you do if there are collisions between characters? Well, it's it, nothing. Oh, well, no, not nothing. You can uh, move the characters and put them elsewhere. You can remove characters. We're thinking about maybe a way uh, to um, be able to detect collisions and return those collisions as a selector. But uh, for now, that's just an idea we're having. It's not implemented. Uh, but I'm going to be honest here. You have to, there's a trade, obviously. Uh, like simulation, you don't have collisions, but you don't have interactivity. At layout, you got collisions, but you do have interactivity. So you can't have everything at the same place. You need to pick. Uh, pick your fight and um, to be honest most of animation studio we're seeing 
uh, more and more these days, what, what they do is they're just removing collisions by hand because it's so much easier to remove them by hand or to fix stuff by hand with the layout tools. You can have hundreds of characters interactively within the viewport, uh, working the way you want to. Uh, and you can have the art director next to you and the iteration is way faster. So let's say there are collisions and you see them, well, just take the character and move it away or, or remove it or change its trajectory. Really up to you here. Um, is there a way to connect the locator or a Maya node as a target to the look at? So, uh, sure, let me show you that. Uh, let me, maybe I'm gonna remove this and let's go back into that here. And um, let's uh, refresh this. Okay, um, let's say you want to have um, a look at node and you want your characters to look at somewhere. Uh, let's say that guy here. Um, I'm uh, happy with that guy. I would like to apply like a look at. So let's bring um, the look at node, which is here. Apply that. So um, you can see here the target position. Um, uh, it's like a vector. So how you can like um, uh, make a locator. So you just right click on it and uh, here you can see you got an option which is called create locators for keyframe attributes. So you just have to say that that attribute is going to be keyframe, the position of the locator and uh, create locators here. And you hand it up with a new locator in your scene, which is uh, apparently there. It's created in the middle, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really small. And now the two are connected together. So uh, here you can move that locator node everywhere and uh, and uh, you'll get your characters probably looking at it, hopefully. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's happening here. You should look at this thing. Well, let me like kind of unplug the node and uh, plug that to my initial scene once again. So that will be better. Apparently there's a node which is messing with everything here. So whatever, um, let's me make my point. Uh, okay, I haven't used that node for a while, so I'm not really sure uh, if I'm, uh, oh yeah, sorry, uh, uh, sure. I forgot to put the name of the bone I would like to uh, assign the look at because it doesn't know, obviously it doesn't know by default uh, what's going on. So yeah, here we go. Uh, as soon as I put the head, now it's, loca it's looking at uh, my locator position and uh, uh, up to you to um, maybe edit. That's the way you want to. Uh, are there more questions? Uh, can you use a moving terrain as base? Um, sure. Um, you mean for layout? Uh, sure. Uh, obviously here, when you export the terrain within the node, uh, within the cache proxy manager, if it's animated, uh, we'll just record this as, um, We'll just record this as uh, you know an animated sequence, and uh, up to you to figure um, what you want. And uh, well, I'm just uh, bothered by that locator. Huh. Wait a minute. Target related to entity off. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I knew that was something. Sorry, I haven't used that note for a while, so I knew that was something wrong with this. Um, so yeah, see my locators is uh, it's uh, here up. It's there. So now if I like move it into a different position, you can see the character here in the background is now following it. So here um, here are the mistakes I made. Well, it's not mistakes, but that's configuration I forgot to, to specify. Uh, so by default, um, here the target is relative to the entity. So it means that we're looking at the position of the locator compared to the scene origin. And uh, that, that vector, that difference between the scene origin and the, and the locator is used as an offset which is applied on the character. So let's say you want all the characters to move their head to the right, to their right side, but their orientation is different. So if you want to do that, it's gonna be a mess uh, because you would have to create multiple targets and depending on the orientation of the characters, you would like to apply a different target to those. Um, so that's, that's a situation where you want to use the target relative to entity. Here, what I wanted to do is to have a, a target which is not relative, which is in the word position, and I want my characters to look at it. So I had to turn that off. Also, the second uh, thing I, I forgot to set was uh, the name of the bone. 
uh, if you don't uh, here by default that was the root uh, what's set at it uh, but you can't like look at on the root so you need to specify which bone you want to uh, use here um, let me so that was the question I had uh, on my private chat box so let me check within the YouTube if there are some uh, questions which may have not been addressed um, so um, there is a question is there a way or in the meantime feel free to uh, let us know where are you from guys um, as you may have guessed and uh, as you may have heard in previous uh, sessions uh, we're French so we're from France uh, North Forest of France in Brittany uh, so is there a way to find individual layout nodes on Maya node editor or connection editor too um, no we decided to uh, purely make that no that layout tool uh, outside of Maya and uh, so that means that here it's all self-contained like Yeti would be uh, within Yeti or you just have one node but uh, one node within Maya uh, but um, but you can make plenty of nodes within the Yeti editor we decided to go exactly that way the reason for that is because uh, we wanted to be able to bring that tool into other DCC than Maya so we didn't want to make a lot of code which was Maya specific um, so um, here the the beauty of it is that it can run from uh, Katana from Houdini from Unreal that that exact same layout tool can run from any of the DCC we have a plugin for and uh, for that reason we decided not to make too mu not to make too much stuff uh, within Maya but we do have an API on top of the layout tool so uh, we've got a Python API which lets you create the node uh, query the node, query the attributes, set the attributes so if you want to manipulate stuff or automate stuff you just have to use the, the API uh, we provide um, but yeah uh, Alex is correct uh, every time there's an uh, interaction with the characters uh, like the locators I've been creating or the keyframe stuff you can you can create Maya locators um, uh, and, and use them and they will be connected to the, to the characters uh, I can see that some people from uh, Denmark still there uh, Israel uh, Mexico but living in Canada India some people from France people from Uzbekistan huh that's funny again uh, other questions I may have missed? Uh, uh, well, in the meantime, uh, while I, I'm uh, going through the questions, in the meantime, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, this way you'll be uh, able to know when will be the next live sessions. Next week's sessions are going to be about, um, as I said on Thursday, we're going to speak about geometry variation and shading. Uh, will be a lot of fun and on uh, Friday we're gonna go a bit more technical about animation with the locomotion behavior uh, I showed that behavior uh, in the quick start but we're gonna uh, go in much more details here um, and uh, we're also gonna speak about the go-to behavior if you want to follow a curve follow a mesh uh, go to random targets and uh, get characters avoided um, uh, go for it um, so are there more oh we bake in a poster node uh, probably that means how do we bake uh, oh okay how do we bake the postures um, that's an excellent question I haven't spoke about that at all so um, as soon as you uh, made all your modification you can remove uh, the helper rig nodes that we had and um, you can just save your layout and within the simulation exporter uh, there's two tabs here and there's uh, one which is to export the simulation and there's one which is called Baker, Simulation Baker. And that one here takes into account the node which is uh, handling uh, the simulation cache and the layout. And you've got multiple file formats in which you can bake. So you can bake within FBX, you know, LMBake, Arnold, and VRN, random and file format to bake out geometry. So that will generate really huge files. Or you can bake as a simulation cache. So that means that when you make maybe thousands of nodes and you don't want to have those being evaluated every time you do a render or maybe you want to bake them down because you're done with that chart and you just want to, I don't know, uh, give that to somebody else. Uh, if you need, if you want, you can just enable that baking gear, say would you like to bake this and bake it. Uh, you may, so you may see that you can provide a cache name and also a layout name. So what's the point if you bake a layout to still have another layout, what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is that some layers 
uh, let's say the geometry layer, let's say you change your mesh, if you just change your mesh assignment, this is not something we do store in cache. So cache are just postures, positions, orientation, and scales of the bones. So we don't store those data in a cache. So that means that even if you bake uh, a layout, we'll only bake positions, we'll bake the rig, uh, the rig uh, modification you made, uh, but we're not gonna bake geometry assignments. So this is why we, we specify a layout name because you may have some operation uh, which will not be baked and uh, will still uh, be into a layout file. And you just uh, specify in which directory you would like to do that and you end up with uh, an empty cache layout here and uh, you can just restart again layout in your crowd. Okay, so um, almost time to wrap up. Uh, I hope I answered most questions. If I didn't, feel free to get in touch uh, on support.golem.com. We'll be happy to answer questions uh, with uh, emails as well. Uh, I also wanted to say that if you want to uh, grab uh, the software, uh, we got a PLE edition for free. So it's uh, time unlimited uh, and uh, you'll be able to do everything I did here. You can play with the same assets because that cartoon character is part of the assets that we provide. Um, so feel free to grab this and um, the, um, the only limitation we have is going to be watermarks at uh, rendering time. And, uh, and uh, that's it, but you can play with the software until you want to use it in production. Well, I can just see more questions here redirected from uh, uh, the team. Can I directly set the position of an agent on WordSpace instead of translating related to agent? I believe that uh, uh, this is what the Snap2 does. The Snap2 here, you can see, has duplicated the characters and snapped them onto specific positions. Uh, if you pay attention to the snap two nodes, it has uh, all those uh, uh, position attributes here. So this is where you can put um, this is where you can put your positions if you want to, or you can feed them directly from a mesh if you want. Uh, so that will be the way to like set positions using the snap two node, and that's exactly what the anchor icon would mean here. Uh, ground adaptation for stairs. That would be like a really hard problem here. At layout, that's not something we can do easily. So we do, you know, ground adaptation. We just read the terrain and uh, try to figure what's going on to do adaptation. But even within simulation, it's a hard problem because you need to have really nice uh, animation to uh, handle this. Uh, so I believe it will be something you will have to solve with uh, simulation instead. Uh, how to change animation layout? Well, you can't really change animation layout because it's already part of what's been exported. That's the whole point of it. But uh, the the really nice uh, maybe way to see that is that within layout is just layers you apply on top of your character. So uh, if you're not happy with that original animation, you just have to go back into your sim, change your clips, re-export, and all the layout modification you've been doing they will, they will get applied uh, to your character. So let's say in my previous example that, um, well, let's bring my previous example. Uh, here, okay, I'm having mostly walking characters. Let's say I want them to, to run now. So I can uh, maybe go back into my simulation here. And that will be the last uh, questions. Uh, so uh, uh, I would be able to wrap that up. Um, I can go here and uh, maybe I can ask my characters to run by increasing the speed. So I'll say, okay, I want my characters to run now instead. And I just have to re-export the simulation. And um, during that export, you'll see now my characters run, go toward um, uh, their location. And uh, when it's gonna be done, it will switch back into layout. And you'll see that all the modifications I applied at layout time, they're still there, but on running characters. So now I got running characters, but with uh, duplicated characters, my kill zone in the middle, uh, some characters with sweatshirts. So if you want to change animation, just go back into a, a sim and change your clip. So yeah, that's it for me. Um, I hope you guys had a good time. Stay safe home. Uh, have a good weekend. And uh, see you next week for more live sessions. And uh, maybe see you on the support list in the meantime, if you uh, do have more questions. Uh, so yeah, take care and um, see you later.